came away with a two-point weekend, tying both Clarkson and St. Lawrence in overtime. Clarkson 1-1 one, one, and St. Lawrence 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm here with Andrew Badillo. I'm Victoria Tolino. So, Andrew, what did you think about the slow start? In the Bobcats. It was evident from when they first stepped out on the ice warm -ups. I mean, players were just lumbering towards the goal. Uh, the first period was much of the same thing. Um, players getting lazy, dumping the puck in the zone. You didn't see any free-flowing offense through the neutral zone, carrying up towards the opponent's goal. Uh, Kyle Hayton had a very good game for St. Lawrence, as well as Michael Gartig, but the offense was really never able to go. And for the Bobcats, they have one of the best offenses in the country. Uh, they are averaging about 4.3 goals per game coming into this game. Uh, they only have one goal to show for the weekend. And Rand Pecknold and his squad really need to get things together next weekend as the team faces again off against the UMass Minutemen. Could you attribute that to playing nine, five games in nine days? Yeah, Victoria, I mean, I certainly would think that playing five games in nine nights, I mean, not even NHL teams do that. That's just a ridiculous amount of games in really nine nights. And you got to think these athletes have school to worry about. They have homework, you know, tests and whatnot, family life. Uh, it's very hard to balance all that. Five games in nine nights, that's a lot. Um, and you saw it. Landon Smith said he's just, it's just one of those hockey things. Players don't want to go up large, but sometimes it happens, and tonight was definitely evident of that. Victoria, we saw tremendous goaltending players and transitioning over to the goaltenders. I mentioned them earlier, Kyle, Kyle Hayton and Michael Gartig. Uh, Michael Gartig made probably one of the greatest saves I've ever seen be made at the college hockey level. Stick save, no look, open net. Victoria, what did you see from the goaltenders tonight? Honestly, this was the Michael Gartig show for me tonight. You heard Rand Pecknold say it in the post game. This was one of the best games he thinks um, Gartig has ever played. It was just back and forth hockey. I mean, he was making save after save after save. It would hit the post over in the offensive zone, and St. Lawrence would be right back in to take another shot. And that goal, we, you might be seeing it on Sports Center tonight. He made the official, or, original save. Then a St. Lawrence player backed it up, and he just hits his stick. He doesn't know if he's actually going to hit it, but he hits the stick, it hits the puck, it goes out, and it was one of the most amazing goals I think I've seen in NCAA hockey. He, he really showed up in this game tonight, and the Bobcats needed that because, as you saw in the first period and in the second period, they were slow. They really weren't in the offensive zone as much. They were playing a lot of back checking, and they didn't really have a lot of time in the neutral zone to shift to offense because they were always having to cycle back in and get new players in because they were tired from playing back in the um, back deep. So Gartig really came in clutch for this team. Yeah, Victor, I mean, Michael Gartig has been a player for this program. He had to step in. It was three, two years ago, step in for Eric Hartzell, who many thought was one of the best goaltenders at this school. And he's really heard a lot of cricks over the past few years, but certainly Victoria this year, he's leveled, he's upped his game to a new level. I mean, this weekend you saw it, two, two great performances. And I mean, they have, Rand Beckham has to be happy. He's got a solid goaltender who he knows can shut out a team any given night in an offense that can really up the ante and score five, six goals a game. But this weekend, I think it just came down to the five games and nine nights. The team's tired, looking ahead towards Thanksgiving. Everyone just, you know, school and whatnot. Exams are coming up. It's no excuse. They'd be the first ones to tell you that. But for a team that's still unbeaten this year, I think the Bobcats are just fine. And so moving forward, you heard um, Pecknold say in the post game that they really weren't playing their game. What do you think they need to do in the upcoming games in order to change that and get back to their where they were going? Yeah, Victor, I mean, he said it. The offense was really struggling. The flow through the neutral zone was not existent. This is a team that really prides itself on puck possession, winning faceoffs transitioning that into the neutral zone carrying the puck over the blue over the blue line and really just getting shots on goal and that's something that St. Lawrence and Clarkson were really able to neutralize for this Quinnipiac team they laid the body on them this weekend won face-offs were physical after whistles you saw many constant altercations between the opposition as well as the Bobcats and it's just something that Rand Pecknold said he's like players went rogue this weekend players are selfish they took bad penalties thinking about themselves if they had a you know, an altercation with a player on the ice, they would take it with them after the whistle, maybe get blown for a bad penalty. I saw it five times this week in between Soren Janssen and Travis St. Dennis, just dumb penalties. Of course, those players are smart, the assistant captain and the captain, so they know they can't do that. I wouldn't be too worried about this team. It's a team, very deep team. It was just 
a tough weekend, five games in nine nights. I've said it maybe five times during this segment, but it's really it's mental games. The physical games will be fine going forward. I agree, and I just think they really need to go back to the basics. They lost a lot of their puck possession in the neutral zone because they just weren't passing tape to tape, which is something you learn midget level. So when they can get back to those basics, they can move forward and get back to the game that they were originally on. So the Bobcats will be moving on to play UMass Amherst next weekend. For Andrew Badillo, I'm Victoria Tigliano, Q30 Sports.